Hi, Ardalan. Can you hear me? Hi, Erin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. It's been a while. <laughs> Pull up the agenda for today. Give people a little bit of time to get here. I'm going to give everyone two more minutes to join. Doesn't look like we have um, very many people today. Hi, Lois. <laughs> All right, it's five past. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I put in the chat, hopefully, I don't know if Zoom allows you to see the chat after you've joined or not. I'll go ahead and repaste just to be clear. So today we have just three items. Um, the first one is the data set lifecycle framework. Yeah, I believe you're you're joining to talk about that. Uh, the project went through a sandbox review on the TOC yesterday, and they had some questions about how it differentiates from the cozy kep. So sure, sure. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to to start uh, just with that discussion, if we could, please. Okay. 
Um, so to that context, I, I shared the, the frequently asked questions. I just compiled it today because um, the documentation is still lacking and it's a bit difficult to digest what is exactly the framework trying to accomplish. And um, the comments were fair, right, about, uh, you know, not being very clear on what is adding to the ecosystem and how does it compare with the COSI or with the other CSI. So uh, if you have, um, so I can, I can just share the screen for the wiki or um, I can just. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Please yeah. do. So share this. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So yes. Uh, so I, I, I will just go through everything because it's uh, just a few questions, right? So what does the framework do exactly, right? So it brings one new custom resource definition, right? The data set. So basically it's a pointer to an existing data source and the current implementation is both S3 and NFS. And so, yeah, is that uh, just a CRD? No. So basically, what we're doing is that we're trying to map, uh, not we're trying to map, we are mapping every data set that you create with one PBC that the users can directly mount into their pods, right? And uh, the logic is implemented as a normal uh, Kubernetes operator. Now, what is the motivation, right, for this uh, work? Why, why we started looking at that, right? So when um, container storage interface was introduced, right, more and more storage providers were available on Kubernetes environments, right? It's just that from our perspective, uh, we feel that the barrier for um, non-experienced, non-powered users of Kubernetes, right, it's, uh, the barrier is a bit high to leverage the available CSI plugins, right, and gain access to the remote data and sources on their workloads. So that's what we're trying to enhance. We're trying to enhance the user experience mostly of uh, data access in Kubernetes. So we're bringing the higher level of abstraction, the data set, and we take care of all the uh, necessary work uh, about invoking the appropriate CSI plugin, configuring, provisioning, and giving in the end the PVC for the end users to use, right? Of course, we're not looking to replace CSI, right? Uh, if you go through our framework, right, we have um, we have implementations of uh, CSI plugins that are standalone, right? Uh, so you can take this part of the code and uh, use it. So we have CSI S3 um, and the CSI NFS implementations that are actually open source, and I will talk about what we did there. So our aspiration, right, is to be like a meta framework, right, for uh, CSI plugins and the comparison that I like to make is like the same way Kubeflow, you know, makes machine learning frameworks accessible. In the same fashion, we just want to make uh, CSI plugins and PVCs accessible uh, to, to Kubernetes environments. So to the COSI proposal, right? So um, of course, we're not competing with the COSI proposal and we're not um, currently, right, aiming to um, e have this functionality, you know, uh, rewritten as part of our framework, right? So when we started the project uh, almost a year ago, right, the only CSI plugin that we were aware of was uh, the CSI S3 that I'm pointing in here. And actually we have four and we maintain because there were some dependencies with the sidecars and all this stuff. We are updating this uh, as, as is in our, um, in our uh, repo, right? Uh, so, now, in the future, right, when COSI interface becomes part of Kubernetes, of course, we'll stop maintaining our forked version of the CSI S3, right, and directly invoke COSI for uh, creating a PVC for buckets in Cloud Object Store. Um, COSI also aims to manage the full life cycle of a bucket, provisioning, configuring access, which we don't, uh, which is actually beyond our scope, right? Um, and the buckets and the S3 is just part of what we want to support as type of uh, data sets, right? And an additional, uh, some additional benefits that are on the roadmap and uh, we have some initial implementations. We feel that it's, after you introduce that concept of a data set as a higher level abstraction, then you can build also higher level orchestration, right? So uh, I think we can achieve improvements in terms of performance. So we have 
uh, you can have, we try to present a pluggable casting interface and we have an example implementation of how this would work. So it will be uh, completely transparent to the user and they can uh, provision caches depending on the type of data sets without the user explicitly, you know, uh, specifying cache or configuring the cache on their own. And also we feel there might be interest on the security aspect because imagine that we could have a common layer of um, ma access management for credentials of the different type of data sources. Whether you have, you know, S your normal S3 credentials like um, secret access key and uh, the access key API, and the same fashion you can have username, password, all part of the same um, a access management layer. And we believe that we, there are there are there is some interest so i would like to point out and give a shout out to the people who have embraced the framework even in this very early stage the european Bio bioinformatics institute and uh, david specifically are running a poc with dlf and kubeflow on their cloud infrastructure uh, so basically they're using um, pipelines uh, and S3, uh, the 1000 genomes data are on S3 buckets and they're rewriting their pipelines to with the data set convention because the S3 credentials are before the LF were repeated and you know plugged there everywhere like environmental variables instead with our frame with our frame they feel it's uh, more convenient for the user to digest and write their pipelines there is interest on the open data hub and you can see a relevant issue that there is interest in integrating DLF directly into Open Data Hub. And of course, there's Pachyderm's proposal, which is actually very close to the data set specification that we are uh, supporting in our code. And if you look in their, uh, in their code, um, DLF is actually forked and it's being under evaluation whether you know, it can support uh, the implementation, right? So um, we make a pause right now and you know take up any questions or uh, comments that you might have i just had one question so i thought the purpose of using the pvc though was to leverage the way that we mount volumes to to keep that inherent uh functionality for the data sets mm -hmm. um switching to cozy it's not going to be exactly the same but that you regardless you're still the idea is still you're wanting to basically um provide an easy accessible way to a specific data set so it's almost like pre-populating a bucket basically and um allowing a pod to point directly uh, I, I, I need to study a bit more the cozy proposal but uh i i thought also it was uh, i wasn't sure that it was part of uh, you know creating a pvc but you know if um if it's more integrated, the more it's integrated to the Kubernetes environment, the better for us, right? So we won't have, we don't have to do any um, new types of orchestration on our own, right? Um, mm -hmm. The PVC, uh, so imagine that there's a one-to-one -one mapping, right? One data set, one PVC. If um, we are thinking the data set to be like a user facing thing, right? So uh, the user is aware of data sets and in their pods, they just use a PVC, the uh, configured PVC from, from the framework, right? And also we're envisioning scenarios where there would be another, uh, another provider, let's say, uh, creating the data set pointers, let's say. So it's a data set object. There would be another persona creating in the cluster the data sets and it would be the other persona, a simple user, simple, you know, uh, a user who just wants to launch pods and launch workload that will uh, mount in their pods without, without you know, configuring, um, finding PVCs and all this stuff. Uh, we are adding an admission controller to inject those PVCs in, uh, uh, in the pods with labels, uh, but this is uh, an additional feature. It, it will, the PVC would work on its own as a normal PVC uh, in Kubernetes, right? And that, that's our goal, not to bring, um, not, not to replace PVCs, not to replace CSI, but instead have a more uh, user-friendly interface uh, and maybe, you know, even configuring it for, for the users who don't want to be bothered with, um, you know, pro uh, provisioning and uh, creating the configuration for their uh, 
uh, PVCs. Okay. Um, I, this is very useful. So thank you for putting together this FAQ. I think that will help clarify some of the questions that uh, the TOC had. I'm not sure, and it doesn't look like Amy's on, what the review cycle is. Maybe it'll be pushed out till October again when they can get back to it, but I'll find out and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and so the, the, the other thing I would say is, you know, we were striving to get more feedback. So what um, I'm trying to understand, the new process is a bit uh, not clear to me because I was starting to put on a pull request, then it was a Google form. And I, it was a bit kind of hard to keep track on where the review was happening. And uh, I didn't get a chance to explain a bit more. Uh, well, I understand it's, it should be part of the uh, framework and the documentation, but uh, yeah, anything, um, anything that I can answer or give a better explanation or demo, I would be happy to. Right, so um, it's perfectly fine that you find the new process a little confusing because it's only been since August and I, I don't yeah. think it's ironed out yet. So the new process, the idea was that um, they were gonna try to simplify the way that projects got into Sandbox and not require a presentation. Um, the idea was that the TOC could look over um, the questionnaire that was filled out and then if they had additional information, they would kick it back to the SIG as they did here and then we would provide that okay, information. Okay. Nice. So yeah, you're not required to do a presentation. Um, you know, you you already prevent, you know, you already came on the SIG, we recorded that, we provided that information. That communication is still being ironed out. So I think you've provided everything you need. If not, I'll reach back out to you and let you know. Oh, okay, great, great. Thanks. Okay. thanks yeah, thanks. I'll I'll send this over to the TOC, find out when their next meeting is, and I'll get back to you then. Great, so great, great. Thank you thanks. for this. Mm -hmm. All right, moving down the list. Uh, Kieran, I believe you had some updates on the licensing questions we had from the last time we talked about Open EBS. Yes, Erin. Uh, I have updated the agenda doc with uh, the information I'm trying to put together. Uh, the action item was to list all the open EBS top level repositories and uh, what are the dependencies those repositories have on other projects. Uh, I can probably share my screen and quickly walk through that. Uh, that's okay. You're on mute, Aaron. Thank you. I think the the question was around the CS Tor engine, right? right. That license piece. Okay, yeah. So go ahead and share your screen, and we'll, we'll walk through that. Yeah. Uh, so what I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, along with the C Store, I kind of updated for the remaining repositories also. So maybe I, you know, since C Store was the first one uh, that had a lot of open questions, I'll cover that and then we can go back to the other ones. Um, all right. Uh, so the uh, main concern with the C Store is it's a, uh, it kind of depends on the uh, ZFS and ZFS itself is a CDDL licensed project. So what OpenEBS did was uh, fork the OpenEBS ZFS uh, uh, project, which is actually a kernel uh, ZFS, um, uh, you know, you can kind of build kernel module with that and ported that to work for running it in user space. Uh, so the OpenEBS C store, which is a fork of OpenEBS ZFS ZFS is a, a modifications uh, for making it work on uh, user space. And then the actual functionality of how OpenEBS uses that framework or user space ZFS for storing the data and the replication and high availability features that were added on top of it, they're all part of the OpenEBS lib C store and OpenEBS ISTGT repos. Uh, these themselves, you know, since lib C store is completely written uh, by open EBS authors, uh, that being Apache is not a problem. Now, the, you know, prior to the last call, the way the code was being built was the open EBS C store was actually pulling in the uh, changes 
from Lipsy store and building that uh, uh, binary. I think th that was kind of highlighted as an issue. So now we turned around that. So Lipsy store is the one that actually contains the main call, if you will, that uh, instantiate the binary and it uses the OpenEPSC store as a library, right? Um, just like any other project would use any other uh, dependencies. Uh, so that's where it is at. Uh, now, uh, still keeping it open for discussion and trying to understand if this is okay or anything further needs to be done. Um, I'll leave it at that. So yeah, I think this helps clarify how, you know, how you're using it, how it's being built differently. I think it addresses the questions. Um, I would need to probably run this by Alex and Quentin. I think we have to have consensus from the leads before we move forward. Um, and then it would of course still go through the, the due diligence as it was normally. So, um, but before that, does anyone have any questions around this or concerns that they wanna bring up? Off the cuff, it seems to satisfy the concerns we had, um, but let me talk with Alex and Quentin and get back to you, Karen. Does that work? Yeah, that's perfect, Karen. Okay, oh, thank you. And I can't remember who was was Saad doing the due diligence for OpenEBS for you? Yeah, or okay. Last time when we um, had the presentation, I think this was the first thing that we had to get across before assigning the reviewer. I I don't think anybody is assigned yet. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just taking notes. And I'll update the notes um, after the call. I'm writing them down so I can listen. All right. Perfect. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And you included this link in the agenda, correct? So we can yes, reference I did. back. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Okay, the last item we had was Prevega. We need, uh, so Justin uh, Cormack from the TOC offered yesterday, the day before, to run the due diligence, but we also need a tech lead from the SIG. Um, so is, is there any volunteers? Volunteers for what? Exactly. Sorry, Luis, I'm on mute again. To work with Justin in case he has questions on the due diligence for Provega. Oh, I, I'm not very familiar with it myself. Well, okay. So. All right. Not all the tech leads are on the call today, so I'll just send out a separate note to see, you know, who's most familiar and has the time to be able to dedicate to that. Actually, it would be maybe nice. Uh, maybe maybe at the next meeting, if we could go through the due diligence that's process because I myself do not know it very well. I don't know if many people do. I don't know if that will help. Okay, yeah, I'll add that as an agenda item for next time. Maybe an expectation too of what the tech leads yeah. do to the due yeah. diligence. Okay. That'll be great. Aaron, this is Tom. I would like to draft that process and kind of see it in action. So uh, the Provega is an interesting technology. If, uh, if, if there's a chance for a, a newbie to kind of watch along and see it, see it go through the paces of uh, coming in. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I, I, I don't think we have a good process today. I think in the past, it's just been um, whoever has the time and we go through it and we just work together and it's, it's not necessarily repeatable or comprehensive. So absolutely, if you, if you have time to volunteer and, and want to do that, that would be awesome, Tom. Thank you. All right, that's all I had for the agenda today. Um, does anyone else have anything that they wanna talk about or bring up? All right, well then I'll give everyone a little bit of time back on their calendars. Thank you, have a great week. Bye-bye guys. Bye.